Hello and welcome everyone to our fifth episode of The Little Insight. My name is Toby and today we are having a look at the question, can I heal myself with kindness? And if so, how can I do this? Another great question. Let's have a look at it right after the intro. So this week I'm going to jump right into one of the discourses that the Buddha had given. And um, this discourse is called the Metta Sutta. There are several discourses on kindness. By the way, Metta means kindness or loving kindness. It's often translated also as goodwill. So there are many kind of translations, but I guess you get the point. And um, so in this discourse, he is talking a little bit about kindness. And I would really like to show this little section to you now. So he says, A certain person abides with his heart imbued with loving kindness, extending over one quarter, likewise the second quarter, likewise the third quarter, likewise the fourth quarter, and so above, below, around, and everywhere, and to all as to himself. He abides with his heart abundant, exalted, measureless in loving kindness, without hostility or ill will, extending over the all encompassing world. He finds gratification in that, finds it desirable, and looks to it for his well being. Steady and resolute thereon, he abides much in it. So, this is a very beautiful passage. He describes that somebody that practices kindness in such a manner extending it everywhere into uh, the whole universe, basically, as to himself, as to herself, uh, such a person should uh, cultivate and seek out this kind of practice of kindness very often. Why? Because you abide in it for a sense of well-being and ease. But there are a few more reasons um, why we should abide in kindness or why we should cultivate such a wonderful quality. So one reason is, of course, the most obvious, it makes you and others happy. And when you're happy, it's contributing to your health. And so it gives you energy on the path. It gives you energy on the spiritual path by giving you and others around you happiness and comfort. So that's one reason. Another reason is that uh, without being kind to yourself and others, it will be impossible to enter deeper levels of meditation. Basically, entering deeper levels of letting go of meditation is really an act of kindness towards yourself. And finally, it also will remove obstacles, hindrances and dangers on your path. So many obstacles on our spiritual path arise due to kind of negative interactions with other people, if you notice. Um, all these kind of things that are uh, coming from ill will, from anger, from being annoyed and so forth, they're easy to form obstacles and regrets and so forth in our path. So when we are cultivating kindness, we are interacting and relating to other people in a much more softer way, much more welcoming way, so other people don't feel, how you say, maybe neglected or pushed away uh, by you. It might still be that they feel that, but not so strongly anymore. You're not appearing as a threat. You can say that. You're not appearing as a threat to other people. So therefore, all the obstacles that come from inter interacting with other people and relating to other people, they fall away. So basically, the great power of kindness lies in allowing things to be. And when you are allowing things to be in this warm, kind, open space, these things will naturally find um, a path of healing. If you give a person space to be him or herself, then that person will be appreciative of that. If you give yourself that same space, you can heal in it and you can rest in it and give yourself a break in it. So that's how the, the power of kindness really works. We're allowing our experiences to come into this warm, kind, beautiful and friendly space of our own heart. So when it comes to the practice of kindness, there are many, many methods, many approaches. And even the Buddha has kind of taught 
several different approaches of radiating kindness or cultivating kindness. Now, you will find something that will work for you, I'm quite sure. But uh, bear in mind, there are a few guidelines or rules to keep your practice well balanced. I'd like to mention them to you. So to balance your practice well, the first set of, um, you can say, guidelines would be there's two, two imbalances that you can find in your practice. So the first one is that you are giving kindness to everyone else while ignoring yourself. That's the first kind of error. It's the first extreme. Then the second extreme would be the opposite. Giving kindness only to yourself while completely ignoring others. So this kind of is it's a bit like a caveman mentality. You, you kind of withdraw into your little house, into your little cave, and you visualize yourself um, giving yourself kindness and being nice with yourself and so forth. But you actually never get out there and you never relate to other people uh, with kindness. That would be the second kind of error. The first kind of error, of course, is that you constantly look only at other people. How can I be of service? What can I do for you? And so forth. And you totally ignore and forget yourself. There are quite a lot of people who have that. They are great at helping other people, but they themselves are a great um, emotional wreck inside, you can say. They have a lot of trouble, a lot of problems with themselves. And so helping others kind of takes the focus away from their own problematic lives for a little while. So it's understandable that for some it's sort of an escape to help others. So if you want to balance that, you have to give kindness to yourself as well as to other people. So kindness has to come, of course, first through yourself. First, by allowing yourself or learning the art of letting yourself be as you are, appreciating yourself as you are, loving yourself as you are. Um, that then naturally kind of reflects in the relationships that you have with other people. You will notice that uh, in the course of your own practice. Now, the second pair is um, if you try to be kind by doing exclusively or by being exclusively. So some people they say um, kindness means action. You have to go out there and act and act and do a lot of kind things. To everyone that's nice, that's very great. And that is certainly one very important facet of kindness. And others they say um, kindness really means only being. You have to float in your own uh, kind space and be in your own kind of space and allow everything to melt, that's nice. But if it is not backed up by your actions and if it's not reflected in your actions towards other people, if it doesn't kind of move you out of your house to help other people, to be active in life, and to make a difference, a positive difference in your community, then also there is not much benefit to your practice. So again, that has to go hand in hand, the doing and the being both a part of life, aren't they? So there's the doing, that has to be kind, and then there is the being, that has to be kind. And of course, all our doing springs forth from our being. So here you can say a bit more important than the doing is, where does it come from? From which kind of being does your doing come out from? And that's really important. So we start again, by giving kindness to ourselves. That's not something selfish. That's in fact an incredible gift that you can give to your family, your friends, even your enemies, to the entire world. The gift of your kind presence is a wonderful thing you can share with other people, isn't it? All right, now we come to the part where it's all about the practice. How do we cultivate kindness? Now, I have uploaded a nice little guided meditation for you. You can follow it in the link right here and um, click on it and then sit down for 20-30 minutes and really enjoy yourself. I hope um, it's, it's a nice little exercise that you can do frequently, that you can do daily, really cultivating the openness of your heart. It's something beautiful you can do. Now, uh, I'll just walk you quickly through the content of this exercise. Basically. It's about relaxing your body at first. This is the first step, relaxing your body. 
and uh, within that relaxed body you find a center inside of your heart and uh, you gradually allow it to open you find the feeling of kindness inside of yourself and you visualize it to spread out into your body and you allow yourself your body and your mind to just simply be within this kind loving space and uh, it's basically really leaving yourself alone that's the essence of this meditation and giving yourself some space that's the power that kindness has to offer it is the power as i said in the first part already it lies within giving yourself and other beings and this world some breathing space instead of continuously acting only from um, the controlling mode i need to control the world i need to save the world i need to uh, make sure that I am not having so many thoughts, I need to control my thoughts, I need to control my mind. All of that is actually quite aggressive if you if you note it, if you if you feel what I mean, it's it's this kind of very invasive uh, directed effort. I must heal the world. I am the one that the world has been waiting for and my ideas, everyone needs my ideas and all that. This is very aggressive. Nobody likes being told what to do and who to be. And so this practice really is about taking that control freak and putting it into your kind space and allowing it to melt in there. You don't have to get rid of it. You don't have to push it around. You allow yourself to fully be within a kind, friendly space. So that would be the essence of this practice. So now we are already coming to the end of this week's little insight and as always I hope that it is beneficial for you, uh, that these little videos are helpful and inspire you to practice uh, on a little bit of a deeper level or inspire you to practice at all, that would be great. And um, so I would like also to mention that you can find a lot of guided meditations and uh, our weekly teachings on our SoundCloud profile. Have a look over at SoundCloud. I also uh, mentioned the link right here. And uh, if you have any questions or you want to input, you want to know something about practice, just feel free to just send me an email. Also, the link is right here. If you are around in Phuket, I also highly recommend you why not join one of our uh, weekly classes. We have classes right here in this room actually twice every week, uh, every Tuesday at 11 a.m. and every Thursday at 7 p.m. at this time. And um, also you can find more information on our website about this one. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can also do retreats with us. We are doing regularly uh, retreats almost every week here in Phuket from Monday to Friday. Would be great seeing you one day. And um, I think that's it for this week. Then I hope to see you again next week. I wish you a great day and a wonderful practice of kindness. Bye-bye.